You know, there's so many ways that our disagreements at church, even our differences, can be challenging for us. Uh, there's disagreements over the decisions we make as a church. Uh, there's the differences that we bring in of background, culture, uh, differences in, in political views, uh, differences in personalities. And all that can make church really challenging. But you know, the churches of the New Testament were no different. Uh, we read about churches of uh, Hellenists and Hebrews who were famous for their animosity toward each other, churches full of people who were free and slave, obviously the Jew-Gentile divide we read about. And uh, those differences in the New Testament churches were important because that's what showed that they were centered as a church on Christ and Christ alone. Uh, a church is not to be about Christ and shared political persuasion or Christ and shared cultural preferences or Christ and a common uh, philosophy of kids' education, for example, is to be on Christ and Christ alone. So I find after Paul gives a long section to the Roman Christians about how they can love each other as Jewish and Gentile Christians, he gives us this blessing in Romans 15. He says, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's showing them that that uh, being in accord with Christ Jesus is enough uh, for them to with one voice, despite all their differences, all their disagreements we read about say in Romans 14, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I think sometimes all those differences and disagreements, though we initially see them as signs of failure, are in fact signs of faith. They show that we really have decided to unite around Christ alone. And together we can show off his glory in a way we never could if we agreed on absolutely everything to begin with.